So as today is our first session, we are just going to have a brief overview of all the things that we are going to learn and by the end of this course, what are we going to develop and what will be our technical skills to develop what kind of applications. So we will see all those things today. So by the end of this boot camp, you will be called as a full stack .NET Core Web Developer or ASP.NET Core Web Developer with Angular as your front end and .NET as your back end. So you can list your profile as a full stack web developer. Full stack web developer. And you can introduce yourself saying that I'm a full stack web developer after completion of this coding bootcamp. Now what do you mean by full stack web developer? Let us try to understand that. In your full stack web developer, we are going to, uh, you know, learn few technologies and all these technologies we are going to learn from scratch and all these technologies we are going to learn from scratch but what you need to know before you attend this bootcamp is a very simple thing that is your basic programming knowledge like C those who want to become full stack ASP.NET Core web developer with basic prior programming knowledge like C so what is it I'm expecting people those who are attending this bootcamp they should have some basic understanding of programming like uh, you know they should be uh, aware of the term programming language they should know how to write some simple programs in C or C++ or any program so they should have an idea about programming that's it they should have you know written some kind of program one or two so this is what I'm expecting so this is uh, this bootcamp is for those who do not have any web development knowledge yes fine it is for them but you should have some basic understanding of any programming language so we are going to learn everything from scratch apart from that if you do not have any idea about web development no problem I'm going to teach everything from scratch now modules that we are going to cover yes i'm i'm recording i'm recording modules that we are going to cover here in our bootcamp we'll just take it start with microsoft sql server then we'll go for c -shop .dot net core then we'll go for entity framework core latest version see now whenever i say dot net or entity framework it means core Actually, .NET, uh, you know, is available in two flavors. One is framework, another is core. And core is the latest, uh, what you can say, the uh, structure of your uh, .NET, which has all the latest packages. So latest way of developing web application is .NET Core. So we are going to learn .NET Core, .NET Core 6. Then we'll go for ASP.NET Core 6 Web APIs. We are going to learn Web APIs. Then we'll move for Angular 12. As of now, we have Angular 12 as the latest version. If at all, by the time we go for this module, if Angular 13 is in the market, then definitely we'll pick up that. Then we'll implement a project. Which has all these technologies. Now, after implementation of the project, we will see how to host it live on Azure Cloud Hosting. So we'll also have an introduction to cloud computing and I'm going to show you how to host your database, 
how to host your database, how to, how to host your API, then how to host your front-end UI. So I'm going to show you all these things on Azure Cloud Hosting. So we will also get into cloud computing by the end of this bootcamp. So these are the modules that we are going to cover. These are all your major modules. What are the softwares required to learn all these modules? So these are the things that we are going to learn. Just you should have a brief overview. That is enough for, for now. You need not to worry about all your uh, you know uh, internal understandings about all these modules. So we are going to see all the things. Just you should have an idea, brief overview. What are the modules that we are going to learn, we are going to cover. And where do these modules fit in, we'll understand in our next slide. But what are the software that we need to learn all these modules or implement? You need SQL Server Express 2019 and a management studio for SQL Server. So you know, this is what we have. So I hope you people might have installed. If, if at all you have any issues, don't worry for today. Uh, Riaster will be available for you to you know, guide how to install. And it is very simple. Just you need to click next, 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 and the software will get installed. So these are all free softwares. And finally, we need Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. So even this is in the market. So all the things are latest technologies that we are going to learn. Latest till uh, you know till date. All the things that has got released till date. So we are going to learn all the latest technologies. So these are the softwares that you need, and you need to install all these softwares if you want to implement or if you want to work out on all those modules now. By the end of this course or by the end of this bootcamp, by learning all those modules, you will be in a position to develop any kind of application similar to this. Any kind of web application. So you have a web application, short story. By the end, we are going to see how to implement all these things. So let us see the running application short story. This is live. This short story is live. You can just you know add this in your profile. After completion of your course, you can just add it. Shortstory.manzurthetrainer.com. You can add it in your profile, saying that this is the application that we have developed. Now, if you see this, this application we have implemented using all the technologies that I have listed. So we have used all these technologies to implement this application. You have side navigation bar. You can see this. This is your front end. We have developed this with Angular. Home. This is your home page. Registration. And we have tried to cover almost all the scenarios that you need in your real time projects. You have validations. See, all these text boxes are empty. So unless and until you fill the form, you won't see create button enabled. You see this. This button is disabled in disable mode. And if I click in this text box and if I move out you have a validation that username is required you can see that here you have a validation email is required password and date of birth you have a calendar and you have file upload so once a user registers now this application is all about posting any story any short story, so your experiences, anything, you can just post, you can see here. This web-based system is designed to allow you to share any of your experiences as a short story. Like your uh, Facebook status update or you know, you post something in your Twitter, so it is similar to that. So, but it has some process. It has some approval process, rejection process, all those things. Short story. Short story is a web portal where a user can share their personal short stories. So user after registration, 
user can share their personal short stories. Now, admin can approve or reject the story shared by the user. Now, it is the job of admin to approve or reject that story. And in each case, an email will be sent out to the user. So, whoever has posted that story, they'll get an email saying that your story got approved or rejected, whatever. Once the story is approved, it will be available on the portal for all users to read it. So, now, say for example, I'll just try to log in. Log in as a normal user. Jack is a normal user. Jack is not an admin. Jack is a normal user. Now once Jack logs in, this is the dashboard for Jack. And you see you have beautiful, uh, what do you say, charts, pie chart, bar chart. So you can say reports, reports kind of thing. And this is the profile pic of Jack. Now you see if I take my mouse pointer, there are 47 stories posted by Jack and they got approved. So this dashboard has the information about that particular user Jack. So there can be a number of users. So Jack has posted 47 stories and all the 47 stories got approved. You can see here. Blue color box says approved stories. And maroon color box says or pink color box says pending stories. So you do not have any pending stories here. Now Jack wants to post a story. So Jack can click on post a story, you see here, post a story. Now you see, these are all the approved stories of Jack. And there is no pending story for Jack. Jack has all the approved stories. And you see you have paging. And this is your tab container. And this is your grid. Now can post a story. If I click inside the story title and if I move out you see story title is required. This is another way of you know uh, displaying the errors. So on our registration page we have seen one pro one approach and here I am showing another approach. So that I should uh, ju just I have tried to cover almost all the scenarios that we need. Bootcamp 8 This is our new coding bootcamp. Now once I fill in the form, now you see this create button got enabled. If I remove this title, now create button is in disable mode. Do you see all these things? So we will we will see all these implementations. We will see all these implementations. Now let me say create. Or I am posting a story. Now do you see a loading bar on the top and you see message or you can say alert that story got posted successfully but this story is in pending mode now if I click on pending this is in pending now if I go to dashboard user dashboard now you should see one pending story 47 approved stories and you can see here one pending 47 approved now, if I click on stories, if I click on stories, there is one more menu item here, stories. Here you will see all the stories posted by all the users and all the approved stories. Like Jack, there are many users. Who have posted the stories and all those stories got approved. So here you will see all the approved stories. You can see pages, paging. And you have full text search here. You can search. You can just type in here anything. If I type in story, you see. You get all the stories with story in the title. Story. In title or in description. Story here. You can see story here. You can see story here. So you have full text search. First, if I write first, you see it is filtering based upon all the records that we have. Now, if I want to download this as CSV, so you have even 
that option here download all the stories as csv file or excel sheet you can see that now it is in csv file i can open normally this is what we need in our real-time projects is it not we need to generate reports so this is a kind of report list of approved stories story id title of the story and story description so these are all your approved stories there are 143 stories now i'll log out now i'll, I'll try to log in as admin now let me log in as jack jack is a normal user you can see role role is user jack is a normal user and jack can post a story and read the approved stories that's it these are the two things that a jack can do now let me log out now login as admin now admin username is super user it is here super user and password is super user at 123 so i have shared everything over here so that this is for learning purpose I'll just log in. Now I'm logging in as admin. Now you see this is admin dashboard and it will show all the approved stories, all the pending stories. Now I'll click on, now you see there are 140 approved stories and one pending story. 140 means 140 approved stories from all the users. Now apart from dashboard, post stories and stories, there is one more option here you have approved story now you see that it will show the pending story you know now this is the story posted by jack just now now admin has rights now super user is an admin has rights to approve it now i'll just click on approve now bootcamp 8 this story is not available publicly over here you see this all right bootcamp 8 it is not available but once admin approves it now admin just go for approval just approve it story approved successfully okay now it should be available in stories publicly do you see that and if i go to admin dashboard 141 approved stories now I'll log out and i'll just try to log in with jack and see whether the story got approved or not on jack's dashboard now see 48 approved stories i'll go for post story now you can see bootcamp 8 is in approved section it is not in pending no more pending now i'll just log out and we have used uh, bootstrap 5 for responsive design so responsive in the sense if you want to see this on your mobile screen it will be visible and easy for you to navigate user dashboard you can see that it is on your mobile screen post story So all the data is being adjusted as per the screen size, like your mobile app. This is paging. So we call it as a responsive design. This is the responsive design. Now let me say logout. And apart from this, we also have login with Google, so social login. So user may not be interested in registering everywhere. User has an account, Google account, and user want to use that. User can also log in with Google. So we call it as social logins. So we will also see social logins. <coughs> So I hope you got an idea what are we going to cover or what are we going to develop by the end of this bootcamp. Are you all good with this? Yes, you can type in yes or no or if you have anything. Very good. So by the end of this course, it is not specific to this application like short story, no. You can develop anything similar to this school management system, hospital management system, or your uh, you know product, uh, product sales, anything, anything, whatever you want, stock management. 
So here what I have done, I have tried to cover almost all the scenarios that we need in our real-time projects. And apart from this, if you get something else, you will be in a position to, you know, Google that, implement it, search it, learn it by yourself. You will be in a position to do that. Very good. Now, let us try to understand uh, the term full stack. Now, what we have seen just now, we have seen we are posting a story and we are displaying the story. So to do all these things, we need a database to store the stories, is it not? So we are going to have our database in our SQL Server. But the speciality of this project is this is code first approach in this project we are following code first approach that means we are not going to design database first we are going to write our classes so we call it as business object layer now in short stories story is one object user is another object so we call it as object so we are going to design classes first so we are going to design business object layer using c sharp then we will use entity framework core to generate database and access data entity framework core 6 so we call it as, we call it as data access layer now this data should be available to the world so we are you know exposing data with the help of web api asp.net core 6 web api we also call it as business logic layer now for example the salary of an employee is say five dollar salary of an employee is five dollar an employee has worked for 10 days now how do i calculate the salary so my business logic will be 5 into 10 is it not so this is my business logic plus if i want i can uh, give 10 percent hra 5 into 10 is 50 plus 10 percent is 55 so my final result will be 55 so this is my business logic and I write this logic here. We call it as business logic layer. Then finally 55, I will pass it to data access layer. So that data access layer can store this data into the database. Are you all with me? Now job of data access layer is to take the data, store it in the database or read the data from the database give it to business logic layer. So have you understood the job of business logic layer and data access layer, everyone? Now, how do I interact with the application? How do I interact with the application? I interact with the application with the help of my front end or UI. Like we have seen all the text boxes, buttons, side navigation bar. So that is your front end. So this will be our user interface UI, UI layer. So we are going to develop UI using Angular 12. And HTML5, TypeScript, Bootstrap, all these things are included. But majorly we call it as Angular, my front end. So the UI is called as your front end. UI is called as your front end. And your business logic layer, data access layer, business object layer, all these things, they are called as your back end. And your SQL Server is your database. So your front end we are developing with the help of Angular and your back end we are developing with the help of 
C sharp .NET programming language. So in ASP .NET core, we are using C sharp .NET programming language. In Entity Framework core, we are using C sharp .NET programming language. In our business object layer, we are using C sharp .NET programming language. So in simple words, your backend is C sharp .NET, and your frontend is Angular, and your database is Microsoft SQL Server. Now, if you see, it is a kind of stack, is it not? Database, data access layer, then above that we have business logic layer, and on the above of business logic layer we have UI. So it is a kind of stack. So we call it as full stack. So full stack includes database, backend, frontend. If you say you are a full stack web developer, then you should master, you should be master in database, you should be master in backend, you should be master in frontend. You know, there are some few people who are frontend developers, means they are good at Angular, that's it. There are few developers who call them as backend, we call them as backend developers. Backend developer means they are good at C sharp dot. And some of them are SQL developers. SQL developer means they are good at writing queries for SQL database. But you are going to be a full stack developer. So you will you, you are going to master database, you are going to master backend, you are going to master front end. There will be communication between front end and back end, back end is it not? there will be a kind of communication between front end and back end front end we are going to read all the data on forms and send it to back end and back end is going to read data from the database and send it to front end so we are sending data from front end to back end and back end to front end so we are following certain format for the data that format is json data format json java script object notation JavaScript object notation. We are going to learn even that. So my backend is exposing data to the world in the form of JSON. And my front end is consuming data which is presented to them in the form of JSON. And sending data to the backend in the form of JSON. So JSON is the means of uh, you can say the format of communication, data format for communication. So if you have understood everything that is well and good, if not, at least you should get an idea about front end, back end and database. If somebody asks you, what do you mean by front end? So you should say, okay, front end means uh, what we see on the screen. That is your, uh, in your browser, you see text boxes, button and all those things. Those are all your front end. And can you name out some front-end technologies? Yes, Angular 12 is a front-end technology. Angular is a front-end technology. And apart from Angular, there are a lot of technologies in the market for front-end. That is uh, Emberland JS, VUE JS, React JS. You might be you know, uh, hearing all these terms. So these are all your front-end technologies. Even your uh, jQuery, Bootstrap, HTML5, TypeScript, all these things are your front-end. They come under front-end technologies. But what is the major front-end technology we are learning? Angular. And for back-end, what is it we are learning? We are learning .NET. .NET is our back-end technology. And in market, there are various back-end technologies. You have Java, you have PHP. So they are all your back-end technologies. But what we are learning? We are learning .NET as our backend technology. And database is Microsoft SQL Server. Apart from Microsoft SQL Server, there are various databases in the market. Oracle, DB2, MySQL. So there are a lot of databases. But we are learning Microsoft SQL Server. So this is the pictorial representation of all the layers. We call it as layers. Layer 1 layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, we have 4 layers and one database. Now these 3 layers make backend and this one layer makes frontend. So we also call it as tire, one tire 
another tire, two tire, three tire, four tire, entire architecture. N layered or entire architecture. Are you all with me? Everyone? Or distributed application. We also call it as distributed application. Your backend can be on one server and front end can be on another server. So we also call it as distributed architecture. So this will be our project architecture. So this is the pictorial representation. Now how does it look practically? I'm, I'm going to show you in the next slide. These are all projects. Live, practically. This will be your business object layer. See this story class, user class. And this will be your data access layer. Story DB, story DB context. And it is going to generate database. Short story DB, tables, it will have all these things. Then your web API, you have controllers and view models. We are going to see all these things we are going to implement. And your front end is again a project. So these are all projects. Just I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, relate your pictorial representation with your real implementation. Are you all with me? So this will be your front end. It will look something like this. You are going to code in this way. Back end, you are going to code in this way. And database, you are going to code in this way. Are you all good with me? Are you all good with this? Are you all with me? Do anybody have any doubt? So you should get a brief idea about what are we going to learn. So by the end of today's session, you should be in a position to, you know, like you, you should be in a position to explain what is the meaning of full stack developer if somebody asks you what is that you are doing you if you say I'm, I'm 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 going to learn or i'm going to become a full stack web developer and if they ask can you just tell me oh, what is the meaning of full stack web developer so you should be in a position to speak up speak out about all these things Is this clear? Do anybody have any doubt? If you have any doubt, you can ask. This is your pictorial representation. And you can also explain this in, in the interview. If they ask, can you just explain me about your project architecture? You can take pen and paper and just start explaining all these things. So this is all about our bootcamp that we are going to learn. So this is the introduction about bootcamp. Now I'll just give an introduction about me. That means about your instruct instructor, so I'll be your instructor. I'm Manzoor Ahmed, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I'm also founder of this MTT Manzoor the trainer and I'm teaching since 2000. So I started teaching mathematics, then I moved on for C, C++, Unix network programming, Linux operating system, then I moved to Java, I taught Java programming language as well. Then I, I got stick to .NET in uh, 2006 or 2007. So since 2006 or 2007, I'm teaching .NET and I have taught more than 1,60,000 students over the globe. On Udemy, I have my video tutorials. On YouTube, I have my channel. And I'm, as I told you, and I'm also, apart from teaching, I'm also coding. That means I have worked as a uh, junior software developer, senior software developer, and I have also worked as a .NET lead. And I, I worked for around uh, seven to eight years. And now I'm totally into training. And I have worked almost all the web technologies. I think I have shared one slide yesterday, like .NET, 
C sharp dot net 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, then we moved on to dot net 4, whatever made our version. So Visual Studio 2003, you know, the first Visual Studio that I worked on was Visual Studio 2003. I worked on Visual Studio 2003, Visual Studio 2005, so on. Now we have Visual Studio 2022. So I have worked on almost all the web technologies. Now prior to this .NET Core, it was .NET Framework. So in .NET Framework, we had SPX pages. So I worked on that. On ADO.NET, I have worked on that. Web, uh, web services, I have worked on web services. .NET Remoting, WCF. So a lot of, you, you can say, you name any technology, any web technology in Microsoft.NET, I have worked on it and I taught that. And I have architect lot of great tech products. Now, you know, apart from teaching, I'm also, you know, into uh, designing project architectures. So one of the most famous project architecture was LinkUp project. You will easily find hundreds and thousands of projects, you know, being implemented on that architecture and large scale applications, not small projects. So it was, uh, you know, on MVC. And like we have this architecture on our, uh, web api that is short story it was similar to that but it was on mvc so i have uh, done a lot of project architecturings so i'll be your trainer and i'll be your author or i'll be your instructor throughout this course so this is all about me now i want you to introduce yourself one after the other this will be our first module we'll start with database then we'll go for C sharp programming language and oops concept through C sharp. So business object layer will be our second module. And once we are done with this, then we'll go for data access layer. So entity framework core six will be our third module. Once we are done with this, then we will go for ASP.NET core web API to write our business logic layer and share the information with the world. So this will be our fourth module. And after completion of our backend, we'll go for front end. So Angular will be our fifth module. Once we are done with all these five modules, we will just go for implementing that short story project. So the project will be our sixth module. project will be our sixth module. Once we are done with the project and all these things, we are going to host it live on Azure Cloud Hosting. So Azure Cloud Hosting will be our seventh module. Azure Cloud Hosting will be our seventh module. So the last thing. That means how to bring the complete project live so we'll proceed in this way. We'll start up with our SQL Server, then we'll go for C Sharp, then we'll go for Entity Framework Core, then we'll go for Web API, then we'll move for Angular, then the live project, then hosting it on Azure Cloud. So this will be our uh, complete bootcamp flow. We are going to move in this way. So if you have anything to ask, you can ask.